um, being an independent comic book creator is um, 10 times harder than being a director. <laughs>
but they were older, so they really weren't looking to help out. They weren't. No, I'm not saying anybody's mean because they weren't. They were very nice people, but they weren't. Nobody's going to take you under. They take a young black guy coming up under their wing. Nope. Cutting into their thing, and and the thing about being an artist is you never get tired of being an artist. A lot of artists are forced into retirement. Yeah. They don't want to retire um, with ageism and all these other silly things that they have. So it was never. I was never in a situation where I had sort of a mentor or somebody that took me under their wing. So you kind of, I kind of didn't know. So I kind of got pigeonholed. Even though, listen, I was working every week. Like I, you know, tons of shows. You know, so it wasn't a bad pigeonhole. But what I was saying was, when you get inspired to do so many different things, um, which makes you want to be a director or a writer or actor mm-hmm. and all that, to, to, to only be able to do one for a period of time um, is a little disappointing. Yeah, um, it is. So, it is frustrating because I, I yeah. remember years ago. Um, I've been, I'm a commercial editor, commercial video editor. Mm-hmm. And I did uh, a series of spots for L'Oreal. And then all of a sudden I was a beauty editor. I was like, but I just cut Ford. What are you talking about? Right. You know, they just right. can't see you like, oh, that's the last thing you did, you know, or if I did JCPenney, all of a sudden I was retail girl. You right. know, well, just- editors in the same boat as a director, because in all honesty, Editors and directors only get hired for what they've already done. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? Where a writer can write something new, can new. a comedy writer can, wrote, can go write the greatest drama in the world, and if people like it, they're in. And an actor can audition for different stuff. Um, you still, people still, those divisions still get pigeonholed too, but not to the extent, um, because a writer could struggle, 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 switch gears, and then when they go ask for a director, he's going to look on the list of directors that have already done stuff, because he wants to ensure his vision stays true. And the same thing for an editor. So uh, editors and directors is the two hardest field to uh, uh, get a, get something new that you haven't already proved yourself. Yeah, yeah. That's why a lot of spec stuff happens. Mm-hmm. A lot of indie projects happen, you know. Have you mm-hmm. done some documentary type stuff? I know you've done, uh-huh. a little, you've done a little reality shows. I've done some reality. I did the Jamie Kennedy Experiment um, uh, in New Orleans and we did it in Texas and that was a fun experience. And I did, uh, um, the, we shot, well, I didn't direct it, but set up this behind the scenes for my Legend of the Man live action mm-hmm, short. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I like, I'm more a scripted person. I like storytelling. I, okay. grew, up, I grew up going to movies a lot because uh, I was a Lasky kid and, and watching a lot of um, television. I love stories. I loved adventures where I could put myself in that world. Um, and that's more my style than, say, reality. But you know, listen, I got a wife now, so we do sit and watch our reality and stuff. You know, <laughs> I, you know, I kind of, I kind of got a vicinity of what's going on on The Bachelor and all that, you know. And uh, and before the wedding, we used to watch the Kardashians, but I had to check out after the wedding. That was, yes. that, was that was it. That was it for me. Like you know, you're on the borderline with something. Yeah. It, 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 you know, in Hollywood, we call it jumping the shark. Yes. Uh, yeah, they they jumped the ocean. So that was it for me. I had, so I they out. jumped the ocean. Yeah, I was out after that. So, now, you, know. I, you have both directing as well as producing. Did you also have creative director credit? Or is it um, directing and producing? It was more directing and producing, yeah. Can, mm-hmm. can you tell people what the difference is? Um, well, directing is what you think it is. Is your director, you set up your shots, you break down a script, you work with the actors, and you end up creating a story. A producer kind of oversees that, but they're not involved in the day-to-day of directing. Um, but it's such a producer's medium. Well, you know, the best producer right now is uh, Kevin Feige, who does Marvel, never shoots anything, but he can sit there and watch those stories and know exactly what he's supposed to do. And the Pixar guys, all those producers uh, are fantastic, too. So there's, there's, you know, you don't, you there's many different ways to make it in this business. Mm-hmm. It used to be just, you think, as an actor, uh, but yeah, we do need definitely, to be honest, we definitely need more producers and directors. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, it's really funny. It's something that happened over the past couple, uh, this week actually on Twitter, which was amusing, was Lucy Liu was announced as the director of the pilot for the next season of Luke Cage. And people were yeah, like, well, what happened to Cheo? And it's like, Cheo's the showrunner. He's the showrunner. So for people He's- who don't understand what that is, what is the difference between a showrunner and a director? Showrunner is a writer producer. He's, the, he's in charge of the scripts. He's the final say. And in television, he's higher than anybody. Except for the network, there's nobody higher than the showrunner. So right. uh, he, he writes, um, he has a writing staff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if it's big or small because it's Netflix. And they write all the scripts. And he's in charge of the final word. Um, sometimes he'll rewrite people. Sometimes it's their scripts. Uh, he breaks down all the decisions that make the story. Lucy and everybody that gets hired 
they come in and they for take their repos- episode for their episode yeah. only, mm-hmm. uh, and um, they you know shoot the show. Now there are a lot of shows that have producer directors, and basically what a producer director is is the liaison between the weekly director and the executive producer, and they are kind of in charge of the look, and they're you know they do a lot of the meetings that make sure because uh, these shows take so much time and so much effort. They yeah. kind of connect the dots between the two. A lot of shows have director producers. Um, I would say it used to be every show had one. Yeah. Some, show, some shows have gone away from it. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't need one in, say, multi camera comedy. Multi camera comedy, for people that don't know, that's like, um, that's what Raven's going to be. And for, you know, um, if you think of the old things, like, I'm about to say some real old stuff, but like Happy Days, All in the Family, uh, the Jeffersons, um, mm-hmm. Fred, some that mm-hmm. people can Fresh Prince, Cosby, those were multi camera comedy. You didn't have a director producer. You probably had a main. Oh, Big Bang. You you know like Mark Sandrowski's the main director on Big Bang. Mm-hmm. For the episode, he's not a director producer, but he would be if that genre did director producer. Right. Um, right. And what's so. so interesting about that is that the fact that there's all these different jobs. People think there's just like <laughs> you don't know how many times I talk to people that they think it's just. The director and the actors. I'm like, no. no. If you turn I'm, that camera around, there's like 150 people on that set. It's exactly 150. But here's the best. Here's the best story I have on that. So my first job out here was I was a stage PA. So PA is the lowest job you can have. You were sweeping. Um, on, yes, I was on Living Single, <laughs> right? And, uh, <laughs> and so Queen Latifah uh, and Kim Coles were the two star main stars, and they had a favored nation deal. Basically, favored nation deal is whenever one got a raise, the other got the same amount, no matter what. Right, so they made. They could, and I have, used, now, they, they could have used that on Hawaii Five O, but I'm just, I'm just yeah, saying. They could, they could <laughs> um, we'll get into that too. Uh, so they both made. I can say this now because they both made forty five thousand dollars a week okay. around in there, right? But this is what I learned about the business. This is for all the people out there. So they have these booms. You know, the boom is what catches the sound, right? Yes. So heavy set Caucasian man with a beard, checkered shirt, quietly would just push the boom every episode. Right. He made the same amount of money they did because he owned all the equipment. Yep. So here he was making the same amount of money they do in a non-assuming life, being able to go wherever he was. And guess what? He made it on that show. He had two or three shows. Yes. So he, probably, he probably made more. And that's when the one thing I learned about the business. Like, there's so many ways to make money that it doesn't have to be with your face, but your face will always get you pub. Like, Lucy Liu directing the first uh, season two, first episode of Luke Cage. Mm-hmm. That was an article because Lucy Liu was doing it. But right. guess what? They didn't have an article on who directed the first season, of the first uh, first episode of the first season, mm-hmm. or the second, mm-hmm. or the third, mm-hmm. or the tenth. You yep. know, so your face, if you got a name because she's a brand, that will give them some pub. Um, but it doesn't change. You know, that yes. that's what acting does for you. But it doesn't mean that you have to do that to get the episode. No, you're absolutely right. I knew a voiceover guy who was an actor, struggling actor, got a gig doing voiceovers, and I used to see him all the time. And he made a huge amount of money uh, with uh, both Nickelodeon, being Mm -hmm. their voiceover, as well as Advil. And he said he made his first million, are you ready? Uh Saying three words, use use as directed. Are you serious? I'm totally serious, because what they did was... They, it was recorded, and then every editing house in the city and every producer had it. And every time it went a series of spots for Advil went to air, he got a check for wow. use as directed. He said, I put my kids through college on those three words. That's awesome. I met um, two <laughs> Comic Cons ago. I met Kevin Williamson. I think that's his name. He does, yes. all, the black man. He does yes. all the voiceover. Yes. Super nice guy. Yeah. I mean, I was just sitting there looking at him like, this man is paid. Yeah, basically, yeah. He's basically, so nice, such a nice guy. But yeah, just does voiceovers. Just and does he's voiceovers. done voiceovers for comics for years. Years. Yeah. I saw a clip of him doing one today for some uh, something on Nickelodeon. I'm not sure what it was. Him and, and he was doing a different voice. He wasn't just doing his normal deep power. No, no, no. Voice. Him and Phil Lamar. Like, him and yeah. Phil Lamar. Oh have, yeah, yeah, have yeah. it a lot. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. and, and Cree Summer. Yeah, the three yeah. of them. <laughs> yeah, I see. <laughs> I've never seen Cree. I see Phil all the time. At the comic book conventions, and I and I seen um, Kevin at the big ones. I seen him at San Diego. I haven't seen him anything else. Yeah, transitioning now a little bit to the comic books now. So you were saying by day I'm the director, and thank you so much I for know. explaining all that. But at night you're like, but what I really want to be because you, 
the, the joke in Hollywood is like, what I really want to be is a director. You're a director that's like, what I really want to do is write comic books. It's the weirdest thing ever. <laughs> um, and see, what happened was growing up in Cleveland, my dad worked out of town and he'd come home on the weekend and he would take me to this coffee shop that had a comic book. So I just grew up reading comic books. Like, you know, all these heroes. Like, what everything. was your favorite? What was your favorite? Um, first book I ever read was Teen Titans number seven. I'll always wow. remember it because it was it was the um, the whole group uh, not in an action thing, and it was the first time mm -hmm. I saw Cyborg and just loved it. Um, this is gonna make people. I don't think I ever told this story before, but he had gotten me some books, and um, he had gotten me the first X Men when they rebooted the new X Men. I can't find it to this day. I have with, the one with, after that. But if they Chris rebooted Clark, ninety six, the, the Chris I have ninety seven. When the Chris yes, Claremont yes, runs right. Yes, I was yes. about to say that when you said Teen Titans and that they weren't fighting, that was what was so amazing about the Chris Claremont run because they had just lives. Yep. Like there were yep. high school kids that were like, like, you know, I broke up with my girlfriend or whatever. Yes, they had fighting. Yes, there was, you know, Sentinels. Yes, there were issues. But they were like kids in yep. school, like us. Okay, we age in ourselves, but you know what I mean. Yeah, <laughs> all right. No, and that's what I loved about it. And I also loved it because... It's that it's a whole thing of comic books, how you you dream of being a hero and all these dreams that you have, especially, you know, being black. You know, you don't even think you can kind of do that stuff. And to see it, it was, uh, you know, it, it changed my world. So comic books all through high school, all the time. But when you went to college, I went to Ohio State, you know, big football school. I just kind of like moved away from it. Yeah. And I moved in, um, but I kept coming back to it. And then when I got on Living Single, the pres the main director was married to the president of Marvel Comics. So they oh. brought me... Yeah, so they brought me to... They bought this company called... So I used, used to come every week to the tapings. And I would drill him. Everything, comic books, Marvel, Marvel, blah, 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 Stanley, all this other stuff. Um, and then one day they he said, I, we just bought this company called Malibu Comics. Come come on down. We'll give you a tour. Oh, came, wow. came down and this, this part was crazy. So me and my buddy put on our suits. And, you know, we came down there, you know, looking all clean and everything. And uh, he was like, why are you guys all dressed right, up? They said, you making everybody nervous. That's your yeah. the place. Yeah, we thought we were about it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I told you, yeah. And so at the end, they asked me, did I want to write a Spider-Man Stop the Violence special? I mean, that's like asking a basketball player wow. to want to play with LeBron. Like, yeah, you know, you're going to be crazy after that. So I had to do my own. And so no matter how far I moved away from it, I came back to it. And now it's actually... And not everybody gets that opportunity. I mean, yeah, not everybody no. gets the head of Marvel going, hey, you want to check out this small comic book company that I just bought, like, and maybe yeah. write a comic? Like, that's yeah. amazing, Eric. It is. So, it, and they just kept intersecting. And even now, I want to do the cut graphic novel. And then in the afterthought, I said, let's shoot the Mantamaji live action short. Even that has gotten me jobs because it's connected the dots. And now I'm going for full on 100%. Now I'm going to try to get into some of these superhero shows. And try and do some of this stuff that I've always. But you with. had, to, but you had to show them. That's the part that's. You have to show. You have, you have to, to show them. I have, I have tons of director friends now that are really good that um, are kind of stuck in certain genres because they um, haven't shown anything. You have to invest in yourself. You have to spend your own money and spend your own dream uh, to wake people up. No, you absolutely do. I actually um, the, remember when I was telling you I got stuck being a beauty editor. Um, mm -hmm. A few of us um, put our money together years ago. And it, there was a, all of us had the same problem. It was a mixer, a DP, a director, uh, and a few other people, including myself, who all had the same problem. We could not get out of. None of us were getting um, dialogue spots. Yep. And so we found a writer who also wasn't getting one. He wrote a couple scripts, and we basically shot some spec scripts, and we all did it. And I and I cut it, and I put we put it on everybody's reel. I mean, it didn't get us a bunch of you know, didn't get us to can. But it did get us like other jobs, which was the point. But we had that's to put our the money point. Into it. We had to yep, put our that's money the point. Into it. And I can't stress enough. I can honestly say, you can look on my credits. I'm a steady working director. Yep. And I was, and I would have been forever in that same genre. But shooting my short for my own graphic novel has changed the world. Totally that's amazing. The world, you know? well, let's so now it's like, what's next? Yeah. You know. So, so now let's let's get to that a little bit. So. Legend of Montemagi, now for those of you who don't know, I reviewed this comic. I love this comic. I think it's awesome. Uh -huh. um, and I'm excited about part two, but for people who don't know, tell us about the the elevator pitch for right. Legend of Montemagi. All right. Legend of Montemagi is a three book, the original was a three book graphic novel series mm -hmm. about a dialogue conceited disc attorney who finds out he's the last in a race called the Montemagi that used to protect us from the forces of evil. 
So he's the last person you ever want to be a hero. Has to defend us from an evil sorcerer who's been resurrected in New York City and is posing as a religious leader. Mm-hmm. So it's sword and sorcery set in modern day with a little bit of superhero overtones. Um, but people always think superhero because the main hero wears his body armor. And I just kind of went with it because, to be honest, there's still not that many. There, there aren't any di- really diverse heroes. All the ones that we're getting excited about have been around forever, and we're finally getting to see them. But I think of- I think when Montemagi actually first dropped, there weren't uh-huh. as many no. that were as visible as yours and with the quality that you put into it. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Now, there's, now I would say that you kind of helped set that bar yes. and there's a yeah. lot more that are out now yep. but yeah when you first dropped that i was like i can name maybe on one and i'm not saying there weren't a lot of comics out but you had the quality even of the book even the paper like yeah. you, you used the heavy stuff like yeah. <laughs> yeah well that was the goal the goal was to do everything i saw the big boys doing um because why can't we you know right. what i mean like why, why can't we you know um people made a big deal about uh uh, Patty Jenkins directed Wonder Woman and it was the first one. Um, it, it, that's wonderful, but it's sad they had to make a big deal. She should have been the fifth one. They should, you know, why couldn't exactly. she? Exactly. You know I mean? And I love why, you know what like, I mean? Yeah, she did so, actually really well. I'm like, did anybody see any other movie that she's ever done? Because, okay. Like, it was, <laughs> right. yeah, and it's, 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 um, it's also a gift and a curse. She should not have been the first one. And then th- there's always that thing that always happens whenever you, announce something like that and people go she's not the first one that's not possible this is 2017 and then you go wait yeah so it's one of those things like you don't know i i call it like the highlander syndrome like there can be only one but nobody realizes there's only one so they look around they realize oh there's no no one else here okay (laughs) oh it's a trip i you and listen working in the business you forget it um one of the shows i love to do is called uh nikki ricky dicky dawn it's on nickelodeon Mm -hmm. um or white quadruplets. Uh, and so um, I'm really cool with the parents on the show. And the mom, Allison, had a baby. Um, and so we got together as a crew and did a little video. And it, and it wasn't until I looked at that video, like there's like just specs. There's like me yeah. and the DP and and the executive producer is one of my closest friends. It's, you know, if there's no racism thing about it, but you just realize how few and far between and you don't even think about it. There's maybe four of us in a spec, and then we and yes. we all wear white shirts, so it really like stood out. <laughs> and, it may, and, it, and it's funny, like I, I've done this show 19 times more than anybody else, right? Um, uh, and I, it made me go, "Wow, it's still we're yeah. still not yeah. everywhere people think we are." Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's trip, it's a trip. No, but we it's a, trip. a long it's, way it's, to go. It's funny because I'm actually going to be at San Diego Comic Con. Oh yeah! But not as the blur girl. I'm actually going to be editing for Sci Fi Channel. Newsflash, oh. guys. Um, but yeah, I'm be the only one in that yeah. room or the show. Oh. Depends. oh my gosh! Yeah, you will. <laughs> Are you doing the live show? Are you doing the live show? I get my assignment next week. I just know oh, okay. I. I, I get all my the footage the day before i don't know they may have the person who did the live show do it again um this year because they've done right. it i mm-hmm. think that they definitely needed it it's funny because i was hired because we need an editor that understands comics and knows right. comics i'm like i could probably do that yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah it's but and i again the people hiring me aren't even thinking i know they're not thinking oh we need a woman editor or we need they're not thinking about that because you know when you have a deadline those type deadlines where you have uh, like promos and things like that that have to go out same day. You could be purple as long as you get that. <laughs> done, yeah. They don't but, care. But what that's what makes it so hard for us because yeah. they they should care, but they don't care because they don't have time. They don't have time. And it's not care. a it's not an insult on them. You'd be surprised. I, I just saw this clip that J.J. Abrams said they had this whole whatever agency is that is William Morris. Yes, or, I think the big one, whatever the big ones. Yeah. they had this um or might be diversity CIA. thing, diversity day. And uh, he cast some movie that's coming out. And they, when he went into the casting, they were like, well, why didn't you look for anybody black? And they go, well, it's World War II. Oh, oh, it's a movie about zombies. And, and, and he goes, and he goes, why didn't you cast somebody black? And they go, well, it's World War II. And he goes, yeah, but there weren't zombies in World War II either. And so then they ended up going in and casting somebody black. But that's the type of crazy thing. But, that, but that's the thing. They can, they can see a Bajoran before they can see one of us. And that's the part that is so, so I, I tell people all the time, like the, what makes us so angry is the fact, is the, is the thing that I say 
happens all the time. It's like when you're standing online waiting for some, something and somebody white might stand in front of you or walk right by you or ask to be next. And I'm like, and you'll say, excuse me. And they're like, oh, I didn't see you there. It's just that the whole Ralph Ellison thing is just so, you know, it's, pervasive. It's wild, things. right? It's crazy. Um, I love the original Ghost in the Shell. Had there been no internet, that we'd have just accepted Scarlett Johansson as Ghost in the Shell. They can't do that anymore. I don't know if they, I would have accepted it, but... Well, <laughs> here's the thing. I didn't see the movie yet, but we would have... It wouldn't have been what happened. Yes. The movie would have failed if the movie was bad. I haven't seen it. Yeah, but it, I don't, but I, that movie failed because people weren't even going to give it a shot. Well, you know, it, and it also failed, though. It did fail for one other reason. Because it, it turned... It, it turned in on itself like because they were so aware of the controversy they tried to re-edit parts of it and change the story to accommodate it but it was paint by numbers i have the same issue with i have the same issue actually with um death note now even though death note was because i'm a huge death note fan i have all the mangas i saw all the anime i saw like the japanese musical yes De death note has a musical mm -hmm. um but the issue is with this, with that movie, they were saying, oh, you can't complain because we made Elle black. And I was like, yes, we can. Because if you know this story, you're going to realize, what, and I'm not going to spoil it, but there's certain things that Elle does and certain things that happen to him that I'm like, yeah, but see, making him a black man, that's going to be a bad thing. That's mm -hmm. not going to play well. Mm -hmm. And you're, mm -hmm. you're going to be, you're going to have a whole nother problem. So, right. and, and we were also, to, and the whole point of that issue was like, no, cast more Asians. Like, we gave you a black guy. You're happy, right? Whenever somebody says, well, there's somebody Latino, right? That's good, right? I'm like, but I like all kinds of flavors of cake. I don't yeah. want just one piece of cake. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's true. And they can't Very see true. it. They can't see no, it. No, they can't see it because that's a lot of work for them. Can't see it. They don't know what to do with it. And they have all these predetermined, ridiculous notions. It's all its all getting blown out the water piece by piece. It is. Yeah, unfortunately, like, and unfortunately, like you said, like, and I have had, I've had to grab people before they start drag. Like, I remember somebody wanted to drag uh, Joe Quinones over his um, tribute to Beyonce with the cover of America, um, uh -huh. America Chavez. He, she, mm -hmm. he did like a tribute to her. And they were like, who's up here appropriating? I'm like, stop, stop. Joe Quinones is Latino. The, the the character is Latin, you know, Latinx. The 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 writer Gabby Rivera is Latinx. And bye, right. stop. You know, right. because we're so quick now to drag and not <laughs> do the research. Now you know me though. I will. I won't drag. I'll just. I'm the type of person that I'm not gonna drag you. I'm gonna say you said you couldn't find anybody. I have a few people for you. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's great, and I think that's what the internet has done. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, and they know more white, if they can destroy white, white, what they call it, whitewashing, they can yeah. destroy it, fantastic. You shouldn't, there's no need to do it. That's what I'm saying. And honestly, at the end of the day, there's this really, really, really helpful app that I use almost every day called Google. <laughs> and every now and then you can just do an image search and just right. find some people. You know, like, come on. It's really, but it's, it's tough. It's tough. Now yeah. getting, now one problem that, but diversity is not a problem that Montemagno has because you got no. black people, white people, Asian people, Everybody. all kinds of people. And they're from different, um, not, I was going to say time zones. No, they're from different time periods. Yeah. So, time periods. <laughs> yeah. The, we go in the past, the forward, back. We, um, you know, the books, the story itself spans over 3000 years. So we have all the things that happened 3000 years ago when the Montemagno were around. And then we have, and but it, it's grounded in the present. Um, so yeah, and we have all different nationalities. It's a very multicultural book. And then the new series kind of picks up in the same way. It starts in the present. Um, and this one kind of stays in the present. But what you'll find is that by the second book and the third book, it's the same, just a different, just a different rhythm. Same uh, back past and things. Right. And, and, and everything that we learned in the first three Mantamajis, we're going to unlearn now. He, he heard okay. his history. He heard his history, but he only learned half of it. Right, because he's the youngest and he really didn't have time to train and mama didn't have time to tell him. No. So <laughs> he's going to learn that, that that his version of history is mama's version of history, but there's another side too. Okay. Now, take us into Bloodlines a little bit. Do we learn more about the women? Because I'm a real big fan of the... the I know. The, we do. We do. The girls we, there, the end of the book. Um, so Bloodlines picks up maybe two months uh, after um, the original series ended. And I won't ruin it for you if anybody hasn't read the original series, but it's, it involves all the characters that survive. And they're, um, the Mantamaji have a sister group called Sanctuaries, which are equal in every sort of way. 
So it's, you know, so he honestly, and them. Honestly, I think the sanctuaries are cooler because the Matamaji have to use, the, they have um, symbols and icons that they have to imbue their powers into. These girls just come out the box like what? Come on, like, <laughs> yeah. they have bioenergy that exactly. just blasts out of their hands. They were better because in the original, the original sanctuaries back in the day could do many different things. They were pointed more like witches. They could do other uh, But because of all the events that happened over 3,000 years for survival, they just concentrated on becoming living weapons. Okay. And so that's what they kind of had focused on. So yes, we pick up two months later and, and, and it's a flip now. It's kind of like, you know, the lead character Elijah was on top of the world, cocky, conceited and everything. Now he has a nightlife as a hero. So now he's losing. So now mm-hmm. he's the first of, um, and, uh, and the book kind of sets up some new characters and it, and, uh, and it tells a really good story, but it's a lot of setup for what's going to happen as we go forward. So yes, there will be much more sanctuaries as we go forward. Uh, there's a lot in this book, and and, and there was and a little bit of, of there was a little bit of something going on with the girlfriend too. It's like, wait a minute, you're not what we thought you were either. No, do we that, do, do you go into that? We touch on that. More? Okay, she, we touch on that. It has a, a great effect on her and how she um, uh, thinks about whether she should be continuous and continue with this in this position or not. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and then we're gonna delve more into that. Um, yeah, we we we. Said she's something at the end of the book three, and in this next series, we're gonna learn that she might actually be something else. She's the she's the one. Wait, it's Sydney, right? Sydney. Yeah, yeah Sydney's Sydney. the character that reminds me most of like Misty Knight. Like I yeah. am the cop. I am following, doing things by the book. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I, I look for, you know, I stalk evil. You know what I mean? Right. And then when. It turns out all the corruption and everything, she gets the rug pulled out from under her. She still has her own values and stuff that she sticks to, which is really cool. And she has, she also happens to have a man who has superpowers and is, has issues with that. So right. That's yeah, a rocky yeah. relationship right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which makes you, which, which makes for a fun little adventure. But in the end, what you really think about when you get through the first series, you realize that she kind of has, it's, they're both kind of going on the hero's journey. Yeah. No. And this is a very interesting origin story because I really thought it was just Matamaji was just his going to be his origin story, but it's almost it's a few people's. Yeah, yeah, and that was the idea. I wanted to create a world. Yeah, um, um, and that was the whole thing, and, that, and that's why I'm still trying to build on. It's funny because some people, like you said earlier, like you're right. When Matamaji first came out, it probably was like one of the very few, and there are more now. Um, but but I but I'm still trying to create that world. And that was the, that was the goal. Like the goal was always like. Uh, Lord of the Rings, or or Spider Man has such a like, or, or Batman has such a rogue thing of villains. Mm-hmm, in the mm-hmm. world. You know what I mean? Whether yeah. they were the only comic books ever to have a world, and so and I, that's kind of what I was going for, and so I'm still doing that. Well, I think um, the best, I think the best comics and the ones that stand the test of time are the ones that have a really good foundation in their world, mm-hmm. because then the more books that come out with the world is explained well enough. You kind of get a shorthand with your fans. You don't have to give so much backstory because they get it. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, do yep. you now comic book creating versus mm-hmm. filmmaking? Now, when you went and made the film version of Matamaji, now you kind of took, even though you had the three books, that short film was really like one scene. Two. It was scenes. one scene. That's where the that's where the director storyteller part came out. Because in all honesty, I really should have showed the girls too. I should have showed everything that yes. we have to offer. Yes, you should have. Um, I should have. And and by the way, if we do another short, which I think I may do, I just used up all my friends and favorites on the first one, so I'm going to have to crowdfund uh, this next one. Okay. I'm doing just the girls. Yeah. I'm doing their story, doing just the girls. And uh, and because it's the girls, I have to cast some real actor friends of mine because um, Philip, who did such a great job, is really a stuntman. Uh, he did dancers. such a good job. But, Maybe you can uh, cast some dancers because those girls uh, have to do some stuff. Yes, so I'm gonna have to cast some actors and some stump, uh, lovely stunt women. Um, but yeah, so if I do, which I, I know we're gonna do another one. Hopefully, I can have it out by November, December. By the same time the books come out, so we, I have to get on that next. Um, but yeah, that's the director in me that I had mm-hmm. to tell. Him. And so we did the the short is actually the opening scene of book one, so it has to begin, middle, and end. Um, so uh, that's why we did that. So the story is really him and the beginning, middle, and end of his thing, and it gets people interested. And that was the point. To get people interested with the book, but but as I look back on it, I go, I should have done the girls too. You know, if I was doing like a trailer, right? I, the director and me, I'm always going to be a director first. Uh, yeah. 
But I like telling stories. Now, you said you called a lot of favors. Were these favors from crew that you worked with throughout oh, your years absolutely. of directing? Yeah, everybody. But, yeah, by the way, the um, the stunt coordinator did Wonder Woman. Really? Yeah, he did. So basically, they had an original stunt coordinator on Wonder Woman. That didn't work out. Uh, Wayne Kennish is his name. They brought him in uh, to, with another guy. And they did the stunts for Wonder Woman. Yeah, he did the stunts for Mantamaji. He did he did the steady cam when if you watch the short when uh Elijah, the main character, gets knocked out of his body armor yep, and yep. he's going all around. That's him on Steady Cam. Wow. Uh, and he did the staff he did the uh whipper staff fight. And they're they're so fast. Like basically we had I storyboarded certain things that I needed to do. Mm-hmm. And then we got there that day, and because we only had one suit, we literally almost outside of where he runs and morphs. We did that took three days to do. That was each day. It was, you know, running in one suit, then running out of suit, put it together. But we shot pretty much almost in order. And we would just get to the section and go, okay, what are we doing here? And he would take the stunt guys outside for 15 to 20 minutes while we light. And then he'd teach them. He and um, uh, um, the guy named Mitch. Mitch was the main coordinator. Okay. Who was the director himself. Fantastic guy. They'd go outside, figure out something, come inside and do it. That's and awesome. Sure see, that, those are professional people, though. They can like really come up with stuff oh, on awesome. the spot, and they can look at the like the body types that you have and go, mm-hmm. "Okay, yeah, that's gonna work. That's gonna kill him. Let's not do that. Let's do right. this." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, at those time, even if he gets hit into a, he gets hit by a rocket launcher, and he had to fly into all these crates. And we were gonna do that at the end of day two. And as he was standing there getting ready to jump off the trampoline, I was like, I saw a little rip in the back of the suit, and I was like, "Hey, um, is this suit gonna survive?" And everybody looked around. We were like, we don't know. And I thought, okay, we're going to do that tomorrow, last thing. So we stopped uh, because that's all we had. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, now, um, now, between shooting it, and I know you're, you're a director first, what creatively, though, I mean, it must feel great when it's your script and your stuff that you're directing versus somebody else's script. Well, that's where I was weird. I'm a little weird. Really? Um, I like taking other people's stuff and trying to shoot it and add something that they didn't think of. It. Okay. Like I, re- I enjoy that just as much as I do my own, um, probably because I direct a lot more than I write and because the comic book process is such a slow process and directing is such a faster process. That's I true. Or, so I, uh, which is kind of why I like TV, because um, I originally wanted to do movies when I came out here, and I still do. Um, uh, because I get to do that. And that's why like, I'm so excited about the fall. Um, every show I'm doing is a completely different genre oh, or wow. a completely different network. Uh, that's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I'm excited about that because that's the whole thing I love of going in and trying to like become in this world, figure out this world, and then put your own spin on the world. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I don't know. I, 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 maybe that's why I'm a true director first. Is that I don't mind not doing my own story, and it's probably why we haven't never pitched Bantamaji lit outside of the comic book world because I haven't found the script or actually sat down with anybody to to perfectly create the script. That's a combination of taking my comic books and taking out one thing is comic books are you know I realize this is even we're shooting short comic yeah. books are dimensional yeah something is three dimensional mm-hmm. that work dialogue wise in the comic book which I've gotten pretty good at in graphic novel don't necessarily work if it's real people talk. No, uh, I think Watchmen taught us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there were things me, that they went page by page and panel by panel. I'm like, no, that's work. not going to work. No, it doesn't work. Um, and visually, that movie was fantastic, yeah, but, but you're right. It but just, it's there's certain things that I'm like, no, 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 this can't work because that was not meant for this medium. No, and- it wasn't. So I, I think when I find the writer who can take the book with me and then totally make it a TV show mm-hmm. then yeah, you know, then I'll, then, then I'll go out and pitch it and all that. Um, I'm, I would imagine we probably do that this year, but it wasn't so ever. So you do want to see Montemagio as a TV show or a film or a. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, here's the thing. If it's a movie, you got to get somebody else to completely write it because once you write a graphic novel that's this long, yeah. even, not even in frame, yeah. cut it down to two hours. You, when you watch Wonder Woman, if you go see Wonder Woman again, watch the first 30 minutes. Gal Gadot said three lines. Yes, she did. First 30 minutes, because that's a movie. Because yeah. a movie, you only got two hours, you got to keep moving. TV series, she probably would have had long speeches and, you know, like Supergirl, like long moments and all that time. I think that's why directors are flocking to, like, Netflix. Because they can, yeah. like, oh, I get to do 12 episodes with no commercials, so I don't have to, I don't get 44 minutes. I get an hour. 
you get an yeah, hour. You get, it's like an hour movie, and I can. And not only that, the even way they do the process, they write all the scripts first, and then they go shoot for yeah. most of them. So, so then, and, and the continuity, process. yeah, continuity stays together. Yep. Yeah. That's that's yeah. 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 So we gotta get you a Netflix. That's what we gotta oh, do. Oh yeah, Netflix, Amazon, because Amazon sells the books. I'm all for That's all true. Of them. That's um, true. I, but I would, I would still wanna partner up with somebody that, that's because even if I handed you my version of the of the, of the first book, it's a two hour pilot, and most yep. pilots are an hour. But if somebody says, "Hey, you can have two hours," I'm good to go. <laughs> now, have you thought about for this next short? Have you thought about having somebody else direct it, or you definitely want no. to direct it? <laughs> no, 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 no. You were like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that thought's never crossed my mind. Ever. So somebody else could like basically adapt your comic to a screenplay, but you and I have anybody else direct it. No, I want you. <laughs> like, no, no, now, this is my baby. Series, I, I want to shepherd some directors. And if it was there's a series, you'd be showrunner. You'd be showrunner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, um, director, producer. You okay. still need a writing showrunner. Okay. Uh, if it's a series, then um, yeah, I don't need to direct all of them. I, there's definitely some, I have some directors I admire. I'd love to like, sit on set and watch them and pick their brain. And I have some friends that I would love to give opportunities to. I'm big on the opportunity thing. And I would like to shepherd some people. Because like I said, I didn't have really anybody that shepherded me. Um, so no, I was serious. No, I wouldn't have to do it all. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm a director. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I am a director. Now, I want to really quick talk about just being the indie comic book creator yes. for a minute and navigating that. Because I, I have this discussion a lot with people who are like, I'm anti Marvel. I'm anti DC. You know, I'm gonna ban all the things. I'm anti Diamond. I'm like, okay, that means you're not reading any comic books. Stop. No. And my other thing, and you're also gonna hurt some other indie artists. So, can you explain a little bit what it's like being an indie artist? And I know you are in some comic book shops. Are yes. you part of Diamonds? Um, are you being distributed by Diamond at this point? The original series was distributed by Diamond. Okay. The, um, new series we have to decide. Um, I, you, those people that have heard, those people who said they heard indies, they have heard indies. Um, being an independent comic book creator is um, 10 times harder than being a director. <laughs> um, you because- you don't have a sales team. <laughs> yes, because you don't have a sales team. You also don't, you also are dealing with a stereotype that is so prominent. I can tell you- No, wait, what's, what, is, about, what is that stereotype? Of, what, what exactly do they think? That it's less than. Uh-huh. 100% so that it's less than. And by the way, and I mean this in a nice way. That stereotype doesn't just go for um, uh, people buying books. Some of the other comic book creators are the same way. Um, oh, yes. Just, I can name it's, some. It's really, here's the thing. <laughs> and I, I have to say, like, I, I've started to come to the conclusion that maybe I'm just naive because as the same way I was talking earlier about the directing world and think not really I like, getting pigeonholed, I didn't realize the comic book world was the same way until I got into it. Yes. The stereotype. Um and by, by the way, and, and to defend those people, maybe there, there were a lot of bad books in the past and that set this up. But there's a huge, like, I can't tell you, my wife and I always do all these conventions and how many people that we'll show the book to. And they just kind of looking at it like, or, or our, our, the two things that happen. Our people, too. Our people will walk by you like you try. I'm not like I'm selling a mixtape. I'm not trying to sell you my mixtape. <laughs> Sit down and look at this book. Come by and look at the book. Yeah, guess what? You don't have to buy it. But take a minute to flip through the page. But there's like, if you're not Marvel, you're not DC, you get this. They put the hand up in your face and they look at you like you're crazy. Like the look is the part that trips me out. They look at you like you're crazy. You're trying to sell a mixtape or what you got is garbage. I'm not trying to get over on you. I can't force you to buy it. And if you don't, if it's not for you, it's not for you. But come by and take a look. You know what I mean? Like come by, take a look. So there, So being an indie creator is very, very, very hard. Um, I thought we did really, we did good in the comic book um, shops, which is, the catch was, we did great on Amazon. We did great yes, on Amazon. and I tell people because Amazon, the thing that people forget that can help them with Amazon, although I heard the cut's bigger on Amazon. Like, Amazon takes a bigger cut, don't they, than um, they don't? Maybe, but by the way, I'm but, still but selling volume, 100. But volume-wise, oh. you'll make your money. I sell 100 books a month on Amazon. Right. If you're only selling, Still. if you're only selling ten books or twelve books, then yeah, that cut's going to be deeper because right. of the of the volume. If you got, if you're hitting a hundred every month, and and that's what's so amazing. If you can get that momentum, Amazon is in how many languages and how many countries? You hit so you the reach is bigger. And I talk to people all the time who are like, I'm gonna sell on Amazon because they're gonna take my money. I'm like, well, how much? How much are you selling now? None. 
well, nothing from nothing is still nothing. So, <laughs> and, they, and, and it's I, by the way, I thought Diamond was great, and I think they're great. The catch is not Diamond. Uh, people want to blame Diamond. The catch is Diamond's connection to the comic book shops. Yes, and the, the, the whole pre order, the whole pre order, pre order, and the comic book shops assuming that when you have a guy running, that it's a superhero book, and superhero books aren't hot right now. Yep, but it's not. It's more than that. So, it's the connection. So now what I don't totally understand, and it didn't affect me, but I've heard that Diamond sometimes turns people down because they think the book won't sell a certain number. What difference does it make? Uh, unless they, unless they, they're still taking the money out of the shipping. You know what I mean? Like unless they feel like they're losing money. I think one reason why you've been successful is you're still now, like when did Mount first drop? The first book? Uh, 2015. It's 2017. 2015, right. It's 2017. You're moving a hundred units a month without help. It's, on yeah. a, on Amazon, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that yeah. still says something to them that it has some type of staying power. The other thing that I think people are missing, and that whole diversity controversy with Marvel and comic book own, uh, shop owners supposedly saying that you know diversity doesn't sell. I think re, I think reskinning doesn't sell, meaning making comic book characters that they've seen forever black, white. Oh, female, gay, whatever. I think there's a, a clap back from fans because of that. But new characters like yours that are put out with quality, I think can really have some staying power, especially since, I mean, not for nothing. I don't, I don't see other comic book creators doing what you do. I have seen you on radio shows, heard you on radio shows, seeing you on TV, seeing you on Twitter, seeing you on Facebook. Like every time I see you, you are pushing this book yep. you're not just like on twitter like once saying i have a book and then going on facebook nobody's buying my book like you are constantly no, pushing the you, book you have to it's a non-stop push um we're just kicking off that's why that's why by the way that's why bloodlines officially won't come out till later in the year because right, the rest you of gotta career, push it. i have to push it and i have to have time like before i had um a really nice couple that was working with me out of out of columbus um but i felt that went kind of as far as it could go um, because I wanted to like, it becomes a time when you start wanting to expand. Is this for sales? They were helping you with yeah, yeah, yeah. Promotions. promotions, promotions, Part of promotion. Yeah, okay. they did a good job. Like here's the thing: they, I will, I will, I will always be indebted to them because they helped set up the world. Mm -hmm. Um, but at some point they couldn't expand the world. Right. Um, and but that's with any company. That's not like a shot on them or anything. Yeah. That, that happens all the time, and you have to make those decisions. So, and also I felt like it's it's got to be me. You know what I mean? Like I have to. So I spread everything out now that I'm always the one tweeting. I'm always the one Instagramming. I'm always the one doing whatever it is. Is that the so, main? Is that the main advice you'd give to somebody who's indie, who's like, "Yo, yeah. I'm trying to get this book out there. How can I get people?" You got to do it as you. You because, have to do it as you. Okay. You have to do it as you because, like, I, I, the best thing I have a, my own Facebook, which is private, just for me and show my kids. Yeah, yeah. I got my Mantamaji Facebook, which is great. Right. Twitter, I have two. Yes. I would tell everybody if I could do it over again, I'd only have one Instagram. And it would, it would just be Eric. It would just be me because I'm much bigger as a director uh, than the book. And I find that um, I'm gaining, like, I, every time I do a new show, I do Raven, I gain another thousand followers. Mm -hmm. I, I, if, if, they, if it was just me, um, all those thousand people would see the book. You know what I mean? But only a portion of that thousand is seeing the book if they really invested and want to direct. And now they're just following Raven stuff. You know what I mean? Right, oh, right. The Mick, or if I do Life in Pieces. Like, that, I, I would tell people you gotta be you gotta do it as you, and make sure you're doing it because you're an indie, you're small, and you want you want that groundswell of people's support, which will build you up and blow you out. But what it's is, really hard. What has the, really. been the most surprising thing about being the an indie comic book uh, creator? Like, have, um, you, have you gotten support from people that you were like, I never thought they would support me? Like, did that yes. ever happen? I've gotten a lot of, and, but the only okay. Here's a bad thing. Here's the hard part. So uh, Van Jones yes. responded to my book one time, right? Um, but it's just me, so I haven't been able to catch up to him. Mm -hmm. he, but then, when you saw what happened, it was before the election. Yes. He's busy now. Yes. Now, if I was a big company, I could have, I could have, I could have locked that in real quick. You know what I mean? So that's a drawback. But at, but at the same time, he probably wouldn't have responded to a big company. You know? Um, I find so, so that. We're gonna put this out there right now. Van Jones, Eric Dean Seaton is looking for you. This is a, this is a shout out. If anybody sees Van Jones, get him to contact yes. Eric. Let's, call, let's finally have that talk. Yeah, he liked it. So I think the books or the short or whatever it was. I still have the thing, the 
then no, he's like, well, he's like, we need to talk. But you know what's I'm funny? Like, yeah, I would Van, love to talk to you. But Van is also, people don't realize he's a big geek. He yes. loves comic books. By the way, loves- by the way, you, I, by the way, the geek, ex- the black geek explosion is about to happen between uh, next, when does Marvel go on booth? Next Saturday and February when Black Panther comes out, you will find out how many black geeks there are. They're going to explode. They're going to explode. Even people always, who never called themselves geeks before are now going to come out the closet. Like, we, actually. And we've always been there. Yeah. We just never had anything. Now we're finally getting something on their terms when they're ready to do it. So more power to it. But we've always been there. You know, there's statistics. Like, when I first got in the business, statistics showed that blacks and Hispanics saw more movies per capita than any other nationality. Yeah. Well, it didn't, it didn't change. No. You know what I mean? We're still seeing it. We just never got anything because we were because A, we were either just the actors or maybe a director once in a while, maybe you, the editor, maybe one, but we weren't in a decision making power. Even to this day, on all those networks that pick shows, except for now ABC is the first one that actually has um, executives in the final decision making of what gets on the air. Yeah. It's 2017. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that took um, the executive that was, you know, worked with Shonda, who now, I'm so sorry, I can't think of her name. She's, I heard she's a wonderful woman, head of ABC, um, to get in oh, there. Oh, yeah, you're talking about, yes, yeah. 2017, come on now. Yeah. So the road is so long to go and so long to travel. We asked for more diverse characters. You're giving us more diverse characters. Now, can you get some diverse writers and editors? I, honestly, I personally want to see some um, people of color, black people, editors at yeah. some of these comic book companies because there's certain yeah. things there are certain books and certain mistakes that would not be made had an editor been like, y'all, that's probably not a thing that you should be saying. Like, yep. ever. That's it's- true. But that's <laughs> the editors in the comic book industry is the same thing as executive uh, yes. producers in the entertainment industry. We need more um, uh, to make a difference. Um, but yeah, we got a long way to go. By the way, as, as excited as I am for Black Panther and Black Lightning and whatever else is coming, none of them were created by Black people. I, thank you. And that was something else I had to say. Um, the the one thing, now see, I early on, <laughs> very early on, I was not a fan of the whole Black Panther thing. When it was first announced and mm-hmm. I started doing research on it, this was before the whole Ava thing. This was before Ryan Coogler was attached to it. When it was first announced, there was nobody Black on this thing. And the first right. script was not written by Ryan Coogler. And so I was telling everybody, I'm not going to get happy until I see some changes. Now, yes, it's all black, everything, and everybody's excited, and I'm very happy that he's hired. There's so many people behind the scenes, the costuming, the set design, all of the, like, our people. Oh, Marvel and, doing it right. They're doing yes, 100% right. But and, uh, but originally, and by the way, that, that character was not written by us. Now, I will, you know what, actually, Trevor Von Eden is one of the original creators of Black Lightning, and he is black. So okay. I will say that Black Lightning has that up on- I thought it was Tony, Tony, somebody, Tony, Tony Isabella. Yes, Tony Isabella and-, and Who I heard is a really nice man. But, yeah, they both but, worked, but they both worked doing, on it together. They're doing that right too, because I just read an article, uh, um, Salim, when they when he and Mara Brock Akil, uh signed their deal at Warner Brothers, they were presented with it. So Warner Brothers, they're doing it right. They're, they're like, look, right. we got this hot, really good, a uh, couple, produ- executive producer, married couple, let's give them this and let them run with it. It's the same thing Marvel did. Go get Brian Cool. Now, there is a black producer at Marvel. I met him last year at the Entertainment Weekly Party. Really nice guy. I can't think of his name right now. Um, but um, they're doing it right. That's what they I told should. you, Highlander. There could be only one. Yeah, yeah, They're doing exactly <laughs> what they should do. By the way, Black Panther be the blackest movie ever since coming to America. Oh, my they're God. They're doing it exactly like they should do. Yes. Um, but I've heard people talk about like we're going to buy out theaters and stuff like that and I'm excited about it but I wish we were buying out theaters for Queen of Catway yeah I know I and wish we were buying out theaters for Slate and, Slate, and so at the end of the day as great as this will be it'll still be on their terms on, of, of the corp- I'm talking about the corporation that like me. Uh, uh, it'll be on terms of the people who own it deciding after 18 movies they're ready now we're going to do it right they're doing it right but they, but anyway, so so I wanted, I, what I hope, somebody, I was in an interview once, just a couple weeks ago, and they, um, somebody was praising the trailer, and they said, what do you think? And I said, I'm excited, I know it's going to be good, and, and they, people laughed, I go, it's Marvel, they don't make bad movies, and people were like, what? I, they, listen, you may not like all their movies, they're like Pixar, they're not, they don't make bad movies. No, <laughs> no, honestly, I, tell, I say, tell people all the time, DC is very good at doing their animated movies. And their TV. And, and their TV, Marvel is really good at the cinematic movies. Absolutely. 
I'm, I'm, it, it, there's really only one animated series of Marvels I like, and I think that's yeah. Earth's Mightiest Heroes, and that's about it. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that. But what I hope, what I hope that the movie does, besides break all type of records, I hope that it helps the next generation and the future movies, the Mantamajis and the and whatever else is out there, because what can happen, and as has happened before, um, they can say, you know, you could go well. Black Panther just opened it at 200 million. And they could go, well, that's because it's a Marvel movie. Because be honest, Marvel could make a movie called Rainfall right now and people can go see it. The hero, <laughs> the hero just throws rain on people. Like, they, you know, they can do no wrong. And that's what happens in Hollywood. Like, if people want to know why it's so important that all these people that are watching, your, watching this diversify and get into this business and different things, that happens all the time. It's they will say it's a Marvel movie. By the way, I know that because I know someone that created something that was diverse and tried to take it out. And and they said, well, you know, and they said, Black Panther, yeah, but Marvel's doing that. Marvel's, that's only because it's Marvel. So that's what I hope doesn't happen. I hope that it opens up the door for more. But it means that everyone that comes out afterward has to be good. Because the moment one is bad, you know, two steps back. It's not going to be one exactly. step. Exactly. It is going to be know? two steps back. And yeah. I there's the other thing I tell people is, they have to keep their. They should keep their eyes on a lot of um, films, including superhero films, coming out of Africa, as well as Korea. Because you know when you sit through those credits at the end of the Marvel movie, and you see all those different countries where stuff was shot, as well as where a lot of the effects houses were, because they they're, they're cheaper. The those effects houses are like, why don't we make our own movie? They're the bomb. Those effects houses, the effects, the stunts. The stuff they're doing, it's incredible. There's a Russian it's movie incredible. coming out that's amazing. There's one, uh, there's what? several animated African films that I'm like, yo. But people people are like, well, it's not Marvel, not DC. Now, here's the thing. I get it for the non-comic book savvy person. Those are the only two, two names they know. But for people who do know that there are indie artists out there, I also tell people to start looking, p- promoting their stuff in different ways. Like, think about it. I think the reason why your Matamaji has also had a lot of staying power is the same reason that Moon Girl has had a lot of staying power and the same reason that Miss Marvel has. If you look at their diamond numbers, they're not great. But if you look at their scholastic numbers, they're through the roof because it's a young adult thing now. Everybody wants the next, I don't know, Twilight. So that's yep. the market that they're going for. So you're, you know, if you fit that young adult um, model, promote your book to library schools you know i think you have a curriculum to go with your book don't you yep i do I, yes we have two curriculum guides for the old series and the new series grades four to eight and nine to twelve we're that's why you asked me about what you're doing. totally doing that this year totally totally investing in it um because it is something people can do and, and best, especially especially because the characters are diverse there is there are no Diverse graphic novels. Not, not that many. They're like, well, it's a kid's comic. It's not a kid's book. I'm like, ask a seven-year-old the difference. Yep. They, it's a book with somebody yep. that looks like me, and they got powers. I'm, ha- They're happy. You know what By the mean? way, that's how most people learn how to read. By the way, we're in a day and age where we have phones, and all we're doing is looking at something. You need visual stimulation. You need a graphic novel. You need something. You know, the old time, re- it's, a different, it's a different age now. It is. You know? It really is. So. Well, I'm so excited that you took the time to talk to me and I'm really excited about Bloodlines, all the stuff that's coming out. Where can we all find you? Because you just named like, I got an Instagram, I got two Twitters. Okay, what's the best place for people to find you as well as um, learn about Matsumaji? Just remember my name, Eric Dean Seaton. Um, that everything is with my name, my account, Eric Dean Seaton for Twitter, for Instagram, and Legend of the Mantamaji, which I would have to spell M-A-N-T-A-M-A-J-I. Um, you know, hit me up. Listen, retweet and post and all that type of stuff. I can't tell you when they, the pictures that Entertainment Weekly put up of Black Panther, that everybody retweet them. And if, if half the people, if 10% of those people did that for an indie book, it would do wonders. Exactly. That's and what that's I, We're doing their work for them. They're yeah. already going to spend $150 million. That's what I'm saying. They don't know. Their marketing team, they don't have, and they don't have to pay anybody. There's one dude and they're like, what am I going to do this week? I'll drop these two pictures. Yep. <laughs> and, and we do their work for them. They, 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 they can spend their money on other stuff. You know, like no, you know, we, literally, we literally do. I've literally found my tweets and quotes in other people's articles. Yeah, they literally do. It's true. We're doing true. all the work so for I, them. Or so anybody that's out there for support, we love your support. And for any indie out there, um, support them. Like tweet them. Give them. Give them five minutes of your time. You don't have to buy them, even if you don't. You know, if you don't buy them, if you don't like them. But if you do, give them five minutes. And if you still don't buy it, but you like it, 
Tell somebody else about it. Tell somebody you know that would like it. Well, I'm going to be hitting you up for some of that new artwork so I can retweet, put on Instagram and show all the people. I will. Oh, thank you. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> you know I'm a big fan. I'm. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming on here. I really appreciate it. And thank you and for sharing your knowledge. And congratulations on all of the shows working director in Hollywood, oh, which yeah. is also a thing. Good time. A lot of blessings. A lot of blessings. I'm very appreciative. Very appreciative. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Eric. Oh, thank I you. Really I really appreciate it. it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please comment, subscribe, tell your friends. And remember, this episode also exists in podcast form if you'd like to listen there. I'll link to everything below in the description box. Thanks again. See you next time, guys.